This video is going to be about silver, I promise you that. Um, but I want to make a couple of, uh, um, I would say, observations first. Uh, uh, in the, you know, in in the news observations first. Um, first, if you haven't haven't subscribed, my tongue is tongue tied today. I need some more. I need some more coffee or something to wake up. Black coffee, no sugar. First of all, for all you ladies out there, have you ever taken a look at, at Adam Schiff? That bug eye and that slight smirk. Does he not look like a psychopath? Would, would anybody trust being alone with him? I'm just saying, the guy looks like he has that slight Mona Lisa smirk to him with his eyes bulging. Now, my, my goatee is messing with it, but it, it, it's just a freaky... He always had that shit-eating grin on his face with his eyes just bulging out a little bit. Not, all, not only are they open up wide, but they seem to be protruding out. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, that's not the observation I... And, and wait, actually, there is one more observation. What, what is his name? Schumer? Uh, the little short guy... You ever notice he looks like freaking an angry Fred Flintstone? Take a look at that short... I think it's Schumer. I, I'm going to feel like a fool if I upload the video and it's not Schumer. But it's the other guy that uh, that is part of, I would say, the threesome. You know, uh, Pelosi, Adam Schiff, and that short guy. And you actually see the lines, almost like Fred Flintstone. Anyway, that's not the observation I wanted to mention. Uh, the observation I have is, regardless of whether Adam, uh, regardless of whether President Trump is innocent or guilty, I don't think the people are going to get a definitive yes or no, a, a definitive. Guilty or definitive innocent, no matter what the Senate uh, passes down on judgment. Because between the, the House, the, 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 uh, the liberals, and the news media outlets, they will poison any decision to be unfair, to be unjust, and to be criminal. Therefore, casting doubt in the people's minds of whether Trump is innocent or guilty. I think the House knew this well before going in. This is the game plan, folks. We're going to say that the Senate is corrupt and they're uh, backing Trump's corrupt uh, agenda. That's what we'll do moving forward. I noticed this lack of decision all the way through the Comey hearings, all the way through the Mueller report readings and questions. Uh, remember when uh, Mueller came and had to answer questions? There was a lot of, yeah, we didn't find him innocent here, we didn't find him innocent there, but we couldn't prove it, he couldn't prove it, we couldn't prove it, we couldn't prove it. Therefore, there was no yes or no. You see what I'm saying? And I think, I think that's their goal, is to never give the people a, uh, a, a, an actual, factual, innocent ruling. It's just to pass. And, and I think it, it, what it is is to put doubt in the voters' minds. Now, many of us have made up our minds, and that's cool. And uh, I just feel that coming into the next election... What they would like to do at least, if they can't get that guilty, if they can't get an impeachment, kick them out of office, their next goal, their, their plan B, so to speak, is to just cast doubt in many of the voters' minds, uh, thereby affecting the next election. That, that's observation number one. Observation number two. I don't know if you've been hearing this much uh, 
about this situation that much where you're at, but here in California, there's a lot of talk about this coronavirus coming in from California and the planes landing in LA. And that could be why I'm hearing it in the news. It used to be back in the day when an inbound flight might be, uh, you know, might be carrying a, a disease or a virus. Those suspected or the plane, it's not the plane itself, but the, the passengers themselves might be quarantined in the past. Or we would refuse all inbound flights until the Chinese can uh, get the situation under control. Instead, we're allowing them in. And what the news is saying is, oh, don't worry, folks. Don't worry, you American taxpaying citizens. We're screening them. You folks know what screening is? Screening is not drawing blood and seeing the, you know, the hemoglobin count and looking for virus or, or, or just quarantine them for 24 hours to see if anything... Uh, comes to the surface, so to speak, visually. No, screening is just allowing the passengers off the plane. Hi, I noticed that you're coming from California. Have you been feeling all right? Okay. Have you had any sneezes or anything like that? No? Okay, you're free to go. That's screening, folks. I mean, come on. This is crazy. Just And it's all a matter of just keeping that money, moving in for the airlines, and keeping open channels, and I think it's, it shows a lack of um, concern for the American people or the people that are already here, regardless of whether they're, uh, they're, Ameri you know, they're Americans here or not. Um, I mean, I know there's some non-Americans, what am I saying? It's just, you, you try to isolate the virus, is what I'm, all I'm trying to say is, normally you would try to isolate a virus, contain it. No, they're allowing it to spread, and then we'll worry about it later on. But don't worry, the taxpayers will pay for it. Um, so, okay, going to silver. Um, I know some of my questions and some of my videos sometimes can be a little redundant, but you got to understand, over the course of a year or two, I've gotten a couple of thousand more subscribers. Um, and they're asking the same questions that you have. So... One, I'm reading my notes down here. One of the questions was, why does a silver retailer, I, when I say retailer, JM Bullion, Atmex, Provident Metals, Monument Metals, you know it, going all the way down. All those, even down to your local coin shops, why do they charge a premium? I'm going to put it this, I'm going to put it just as simple as I can. they got to make a profit. To, uh, to keep their doors open, to pay the electric bill, pay the lease of the, the business, to pay their employees. Bottom line is, what the spot prices is, is what they buy it from the manufacturers from. They buy it from the manufacturers at one price and sell it to us at a slightly higher price. Nothing abnormal about that. There's nothing abnormal about that at all. It's kind of like... The lumber yards, or I should say the Home Depots, they buy their stuff from vendors and they sell it to us at a slightly higher cost. That's all it is. They need to make a profit. That's it. So the next question is, how high of a premium would I be willing to buy? Now, obviously, I would shop around. I always shop around and find the cheapest price for whatever I want. But let's just say unanimously, tomorrow, Spot price for all silver went up five bucks. Would I buy? Absolutely. I would buy. It's still worth it. So what, did, what, is, what was silver this morning? Uh, 1790 I think it was. We'll just round it to 18 bucks. That makes silver or what? That would make silver 23 bucks. Silver for 23 bucks an ounce is still dirt cheap. So the next part of this question is, well, you're never going to get your your premium back if you go to sell it. I disagree with that on the long term. For those people who 
who buy an ounce of silver and go to sell it in two or three months because they want to go and buy a new iPhone or just need the cash to pay some bills, yeah, then you might not get your premium back. I'm willing to agree with that. But let's just say you started stacking when you were 20 years old or, or 30 or 40 or 50 years old. And your goal is not to retire until retirement age of, what is it nowadays, 73? Maybe, you're, maybe some of you folks plan on uh, selling the silver then. That means you've been stacking some of you for 40 years, maybe? Some of you, maybe 30 years? I do believe through that type of time, silver will go up and you will more than make up your premium. But in the short term, maybe even a year buying silver and only holding on for it a year or two, I got to admit, you might not get your premium back. And not just might, I got to say with a definitive answer, you won't get your premium back. But if you hold on to it, silver stacking is for me is the longevity. It's not about holding on to it. Oh, the price took is about to take a dip. I'm going to try to sell it and get back in after the dip. I don't, I'm not a day trader. Many of us are not day traders when it comes to our precious metals. And this includes gold. If we hold on to it, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, do you not think Silver's going to go up. The $3 that you paid for on your premium, that's about what it is right now. What, three bucks? I'm just averaging it out. Maybe some of you pay, paid three fifty. I don't know. Maybe some of you paid two. I don't know. I'm averaging it out to three. Do you not think over the course of 20, 30, 40, possibly some of us holding on to it for 50 years until we sell, you're going to make back that money, that premium that you spent, and maybe a little bit more? Folks, I think you will. Anyway, I gotta run, I gotta go to work. I hope, uh, again, you subscribe me a thumbs up and uh, click that little bell icon if you haven't already. That'll notify you when I put out a video. Take care of yourselves. Off to work I go.